Welcome to the mini lecture on persuasive speaking. Uh, we have largely been dealing with informative speaking throughout the semester, and the goal of these type of speeches obviously is to inform, to leave the audience with something they didn't know. Uh, we're generally describing, explaining, or demonstrating. Now today we'll be shifting gears and discussing persuasive speaking. In this lecture we'll talk about the elements of a persuasive speech, the two categories of persuasive speeches, the three broad types of audiences, the type of thesis statements we use, and the specific ways that we organize our main points. Now we're going to split this lecture into two parts, and in the first part we will be discussing the two broad categories of persuasive speaking, as well as the three uh, types of audiences that we face. Now, as I said, persuasive speaking can be broken down into two broad categories, and these categories are distinguished by two terms, influence and change. Dispositional spe speeches, this is the first type of speech, are, are designed to influence people's values, uh, their beliefs, and their attitudes. Now, we've discussed these terms in an earlier lecture, but as a refresher, we said that values are the code that we live by, and, in, and beliefs are informed by our value system. They are both strongly anchored and are difficult or impossible to change. Attitudes are predispositions, that is, likes or dislikes, based upon our, our value system and our belief structure. Uh, ad, attitudes are more pliable, and those are the things that we go after uh, generally in an argument. Uh, in the earlier example, I used my value of pacifism, my belief in nonviolence, and my attitude towards anything nonviolent. Uh, we extended this further by looking at the example of video games. Um, I believe that video games are violent, and therefore I would never have them in my home. We said we would try to attack this attitude because it is in fact the weakest of the three, the beliefs or the value system. In essence, we're trying to influence the disposition of an audience on this topic. Our goal is to get them, if they're hostile, to be less disagreeable about this particular topic. Now, well, the, when the goal is to influence, you're trying to get people to agree with you or be le less disagreeable with you. Sometimes your goal may just get, get them to see your point of view. Uh, now, our, our goal in dispositional speaking is not to seek action or to affect change, but once again, it is trying to influence uh, their disposition on a particular topic. Conversely, actuation speaking does involve uh, action or change. Your goal is to motivate the audience to take action, to affect change. Instead of trying to influence the audience about video games, maybe you want to uh, convince them to become agents of change. We want, even want to go with the flip side of the argument and say video games that encourage violent behavior should be marketed, uh, should not be marketed towards teens. So how do we know which type of speech we're going to use? How do we know what our goal is? Um, audience analysis. This is where we find out about the values, beliefs, and attitudes of a particular audience. Now, in general, we can say there are three types of, of audiences. Audiences who are undecided, uh, audiences who agree with us, and audiences who are opposed. And we have three general rules. If an audience agrees with us, then they're ready to take action. We're trying to affect some sort of change. Uh, and this is actuation speaking. The other two types of audiences, if the audience is undecided, we're trying to get them to seek agreement. And if the audience is opposed, we're trying to seek incremental change to, or to have them become less disagreeable or to see our point of view. We're trying to influence them. They're not ready to take action yet. Um, in short, it all comes forth from the audience. And this is why we say that public speaking is audience-centered and goal-oriented. We need to find out where our audience is on a particular topic because they will let us know what our goal is and how best to approach that particular topic. Now, in part two of the lecture, uh, we're going to discuss how we phrase a thesis statement called the claim. And then we're also going to look at how we organize our main points. So, see you then.